First question is from Cole Rowe. Does flexing in the mirror have any significant carryover for mind to muscle connection? It sure does. <laughs> yeah, ask of Sal course this it does, one. Sal. Yeah. Right? No, you know what's funny? It is, must. If you look up the studies on isometrics, right, and the value of I isometrics yes. and how it helps you connect to muscle so you can fire it better. Um, and, and, and oftentimes, isometrics are done in these studies without any outside uh, forces. So you're just flexing essentially like what a bodybuilder would do on stage. Yeah. And if you look at the the old school bodybuilders, this was actually a part of the routine. I know Arnold would talk about posing for an hour a day, something like that, uh, pre-contest before the show. And he said it would bring out definition um, and, uh, and quality, he said, to his muscles. This there's this 100% has value. So yes, there's definitely an ego portion, right? Where you're, you're flexing for the mirror. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, if you know how to hit, here's a good example. If you know how to hit a good back pose where you can activate your lats and flare them and flex them, you're going to be mu- it's going to be much easier to feel your lats when you do an exercise like a row. Well, this or a is how down. I teach if there's not any good solid connection, my muscle connection there in the chest even, like I'll slow it down and just, you know, sort of pause in that position to squeeze and, and gain that uh, neuromuscular connection because it's, it's so valuable that way because when you slow down uh, and you're able to kind of feel feel your way to, to activation of the muscle, uh, that isometrics are, are beautiful for that. I yeah. always wonder when I was competing if that was like the origin of it, right? Like if somebody actually really had the smarts to know that what he was doing or or she, if it was a girl that was starting to do this first, right? Like if it was, if my intention was to fire the CNS, get better connected. That's why I'm flexing in the gym all day long. Or if it was really something that was more self-absorbed, I like the way I look. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I always wondered that. I Now I know that- Chicken or the egg. Huh? We talk Which about one? this a lot. We talk about the importance of the central nervous system. We talk about being able to be connected to a muscle. If you can, if you can with no resistance, flex- Every muscle in your body, I guarantee that you can train it better than someone who yes. can. Th- that's control. Yeah. So yeah. that is a that yeah. is a fact. I mean, yes. So and there is extreme value there. If you can on command, if I can look at you, say, Sal, flex your right pec or squeeze your left lat. If you have the ability yep. to just like that, flex or activate that, I guarantee that you have a much easier time building that muscle inside the gym. Totally. Now yeah. to answer your question, it was the isometrics that came first. So tension based exercises uh, have been around as long as we've known about resistance training, it's been practiced for a very, very long time as a way to improve strength uh, and performance. Later on, bodybuilding included a posing round. So what they actually used to do in these shows is you would come out and do some kind of a feat of strength, mm-hmm. usually involving gymnastics or some kind of a strong man event. Then there was a second round so where you they came should out bring that back. And you by fl- the way. yeah, right. It, it, be <laughs> awesome. Could you imagine these three hundred pound bodybuilders doing some kind of like uh, gymnastics? Yeah, do something cool. Some of them can't stand though. there. You're yeah. right. I've but seen, that, mo- yeah. most of those are like that's genetics though. Yeah. Some of them just are flexible. Like in well, others. Flex Wheeler, man, he would do like he, he got the splits yeah. on stage and do. Uh, yeah. Tom Platts was known for his incredible flexibility. Yeah, but anyway, it's it's there's definitely value to it. And what's funny is the bodybuilding poses, the compulsory bodybuilding poses. Actually, if you do them right, are excellent at activating pretty much every single muscle. Yeah, yeah. Every single muscle. You have the the front double bicep, the back double bicep, the front lat spread, the back lat, lat you know lat spread. You have the the you know hands around the the neck ab pose, which is actually more of a, a quad pose, most muscular. Like all of the poses that you find in bodybuilding, even the rotating ones, which aren't compulsory. They're excellent for well, connecting. Even to before bodybuilding, you had Charles Atlas, and you had his yeah. whole program that was body weight based, but it was all just isometric flexing. Well, I mean, for yeah. the most part, this so. skill also uh, gives you the ability to change exercises. So you can do an exercise to to that one person may look at and go like, oh, that's for your traps, or oh, that's for your rear delts, and you can actually change what you're trying to focus on because you have that ability. Totally. Like I, when I go into an exercise. I can take the same exercise and it could be something that was designed for my rhomboids, but I could be using it for my rear delts. Mm. Or, you know, you could be doing something that's like a, a major back exercise, but you're really trying to isolate and focus on the lat. So you can do movements 
that are traditionally for something else, but then work. I mean, just like a, a close grip bench press, right? When you are trying to work the triceps, you can really make that be more tricep than chest and shoulders. But if you don't know how to think about that yep. while you do the movement, it becomes a lot of chest and shoulder still. It's yep. still a chest and shoulder movement because of what you're doing. But if you have that ability to contract and flex the tricep on command like that, because you've practiced that, then you can go into a movement that, yeah, it has chest, shoulder, and and triceps and you can make it more triceps like you're trying to do yeah like how about a, uh, a, a supinated grip chin up i can make that a back or a bicep, or a bicep. exercise That's right. yeah. like big time bicep, Very bicep exercise. Focused. Yeah. yeah i'll tell you what um when you look at priming like we talk about priming all the time yeah. uh, priming really is a much more uh individualized advanced and effective way of just connecting to muscle Flexing, essentially, is what priming is um, if we were to make it really, really general. So definitely there's a value to flexing. In fact, especially if you have a weak body part, flexing it in between sets um, and at the end of your workout should make a difference. Well, that's all the resist. All resistance training is flexion of the muscles with some sort of resistance. Yeah. That's all it is. You are flexing a muscle and, and that resistance can be weights yeah. like barbell stuff. It could be cables. It could be bands. I mean, that's all resistance training really is, is flexion of the muscle with some sort of resistance.